music has gone through how many phases, if you would group it? Well, I don't know how many phases my music's gone through. I write my music according to my lifestyle. If I'm sad, I write sad music. If I'm being divorced, I write divorce albums. If I'm, uh, if I'm sexy, if I feel hot and you know, horny as I'm, I'll write a horny album. <laughs> Ben, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. There, it's a result of um, three or four things. One thing was I was undergoing two divorces at the same time, which can be rather traumatic by itself. And then I was in bankruptcy. All my property had been confiscated, and there was a lot of money and a lot of property, millions of dollars, and that was rough, leaving me penniless. And then I was really having quite a political upheaval with Motown at the time, and we weren't getting on at all. And I was really broke, and things didn't look too good, so I was stuck in this forest, and I couldn't see me. Oh, yeah, I didn't tell you. I owed the government four million bucks, too, so that, that was, that's enough to leave the country, you know. You owed the government four million bucks. I, I forgot to tell you that. I just want everybody to know why I got the heck out of Dodge. <laughs> the way I thought Mahalia Jackson, may, Jackson might have sung it, um, with a little bit of my style, but barring a bit of her. And I put it to a, a, march, a march beat with a slight reggae um, undertone, very, very slight. And uh, <laughs> I felt that um, while singing it, while practicing it, I felt that I felt it. Mm -hmm. from my soul, you know. I felt that um, singing it with that kind of music as the background gave me an inspiration. And I asked God that when I sang it, would it move, would he let it move men's souls? And um, I decided to go with it. Let me get your feelings on a, on a few subjects. Um, first of all, money. What's your feeling on money? I'm broke. That's the first thing. And um, I'm not particularly fond of money, if that's what you're asking me. Um, it's not my first prerequisite, you know. I'm, one of my great passions are cars, and um, I, um, I spend a lot of money on the uh, Ferris X, which gets me in a lot of trouble. Cars and women. I guess. Yeah. Fast cars, fast women? Well, um, some are slow. Cars or the women? It's <laughs> both. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, taxes? Oh, I owe lots of taxes. How do you feel about taxes? I don't feel, fair? I don't, sure, it's, it's fair if that's, but, uh, if that's what they want to take. I, listen, I just, um, I don't own this thing down here. They can take what they want. I just have to try and uh, keep what I can keep, and there are people who are able to do that for us, and, uh, and we just use the law and uh, keep what we can keep within the law, and let them let Caesar have what Caesar wants. I can't fight Caesar. Uh, love. 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 What about love? That's what. I, how do you feel about love? I don't know. Love is misery. <laughs> love is miserable. I think I'll be a bachelor and I'll swing and um, I won't fall in love. I'll just be loveful, be kind and good and um, have fun. I don't feel like being miserable. Marriage. Miserable. <laughs> miserable. Except you find the right that is your um, soulmate, and that takes a lot of looking. Um, I'll never marry again until I know I'm ready, and that I have the right lady, and the right consciousness, and a good girl, a girl who don't fool around too much and all that stuff, you know? Sex. Sex, oh God. Sex, sex is marvelous. Um, Love is miserable. And Marriage is, is miserable. And sex is great. <laughs> yeah, that's about right for me right now. No, no, there is quite a separation between the two as far as I'm concerned. I think that sex is really sex and love is love and 
if you happen to love the person that you're having sex with, that's tremendous. But um, I really see a complete separation in the two that are totally unrelated to me. Chewing gum. I love it. <laughs> I did this on the Grammys, I heard. I hear I did it blew a big bubble. I was nervous because um, <laughs> I didn't know if I'd win or not. And I was just blowing sort of this bubble, you know. Somebody said, Jesus, you got this blob of gum on TV. <laughs> Most terrible thing we've ever seen. It's awful, huh? <laughs> well, if you like for me to stop. If it's, no, if no, it's actually, a bug. No, actually, I knew you were going to be chewing and I didn't want you to so feel all alone. Me, you brought me a package, huh? Or are you going to chew with me? I'm chew with you. Yeah. Bless your heart. You want to chew with <laughs> me? You need a fresh good. stick. No, no, no. You actually, I've got you, this habit. I could never figure where to store it. Thank you. So my dad sort of stores it behind his ear here. Mm-hmm. And when I when I need a quick, you know, I always store it behind there. How does it play when it comes back? Well, it's good because I keep my ears very clean for that purpose. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I read in an article that you once seriously thought or tried to commit suicide. Well. Yeah, I really hate to respond to this question because I, I hate to, to, to answer questions that make me appear that weak. But being an honest soul, I have to, to um, tell you, yes, I was quite close to that point at one time during my four-year hiatus. Considering it, yes. The, the, the whole... It's called, I was a manic depressant. I was at my lowest ebb. I really didn't feel like... Um, I was loved, and uh, because I didn't feel loved, I felt useless. You are uh, getting ready to go back on the road now. Yeah. And you got a tour that's already selling out, and you haven't even gotten on the, you haven't even started yet. No. Oh. How's it feel? Feels great. You love that, don't you? It's incredible. Now you talk about feeling being loved, and that's gotta that's gotta make you feel at your highest ebb. Oh yes. <laughs> 